Hey guys, James again for TFB TV, and today on TFB TV, I'm gonna tell you why the Mini 14 is better than the AR-15. Some of you guys may not know what the Mini 14 is. The Mini 14 is a 223 semi-automatic magazine-fed rifle like the AR-15, at least in that regard. It was introduced in 1973 by Ruger, and it's called the Mini 14 because it was a smaller version of the M14. Now, of course, the Mini 14 had a number of modifications, but for the most part, it's a pretty accurate but smaller replication of the M14. I have a lot of respect for the Mini 14. They're well made. Ruger has a great warranty for them. They've been around for a while. They are tactical, semi-automatic, interchangeable magazine 223s that perform pretty darn well, but they're a lot lower profile than the high-speed, low-drag, tactical AR-15. And you guys know I'm a big AR-15 guy as well, and when I say I'm telling you why the Mini 14 is better than the AR-15, if I had to pick one or the other, AR-15 all day. But I am going to tell you the things that the Mini 14 does, in fact, do better than the AR-15. All right, let's start it off light. The Mini 14 has a lot lower and more conservative profile. It looks more like a hunting rifle when it is, in fact, a tactical semi-automatic rifle and an intermediate cartridge. You have about a 43% less chance, in my personal experience, of your nosy ass neighbors calling the cops on you if they see you taking your Mini 14 out to your truck versus your big scary AR-15. And while the Mini 14 is much more subtle than the AR-15, it performs just as well and is almost as capable as the AR-15. So let's talk about those capabilities. Trigger out of the box is a huge consideration in rifle performance. And fortunately, the Mini 14 has an outstanding trigger. Now you may read if you browse around and you're looking at stuff, you're thinking about picking up a Mini 14, you read some articles on it or some forum posts, people did bitch about the Mini 14 trigger being poor. Now, I don't know, I never owned an older Mini 14, but when I'm talking about Mini 14s today, I'm talking about the 580 serial number, 580 prefix and higher. I'll tell you why the 580 is important later in the video. But I'm talking about new, modern, you can go to Academy, pick one up right now, Mini 14s. And the new ones have incredible triggers. You're looking at between five and a half and six pounds, crisp, with maybe a millimeter of take up before the trigger breaks. Now with the AR-15, you guys know those triggers are nothing to write home about, at least the GI triggers. You can spend 200 bucks and throw a Geisley in there, but out of the box, you're looking at a seven and a half to eight pound trigger. That's nothing to write home about. So the Mini 14's got the edge on the out of the box trigger. All right, what else? The Mini 14 is shorter. Now, if you look at it on paper, in out of the box fixed stock, Mini 14 is almost the exact same length, overall length and weight as say a Colt 6920, like a basic M4. However, because the Mini 14 has a recoil assembly that is forward of the stock, unlike the AR-15, which has a recoil assembly inside of the stock, with the Mini 14, you can either shorten the stock if you want, I mean, hell, hack it off if you want to, or you can buy readily available folding stocks that are gonna make this gun a lot more maneuverable, easy to carry, easier to pack. Ruger even makes a pretty sweet A-Team style factory stock. I don't know if they still make it anymore, but it was like a wire stock that I thought was pretty cool that came on the AC556, which is the full auto version of the Mini 14. And while the Mini 14 is a little bit shorter, it has a significantly longer sight radius than the AR-15. While the rear sight on the Mini 14 and the AR-15 are both in the back of the receiver and relatively the same location, with the Mini 14, you have a pinned front sight base that is almost all the way out to the muzzle, whereas with the M4, it's much closer at the end of the carbine length handguard because of the carbine length gas system. And even if you have a mid-length, like I'm showing you here, even the mid-length still comes short in terms of sight radius versus the Mini 14. Let's get to something a little bit more important, the operating system. This gun borrows the fixed gas piston system from the M14, that is the Mini 14 does. And arguably that makes it a cleaner operating gun than the AR-15 that uses the gas tube gas impingement system, 
where the gases from the firing sequence are ejected directly into the chamber bolt carrier group with the AR-15. That's not the case with the Mini-14 that uses a fixed gas piston. Now, arguably, not only does it make it cleaner, but if you're shooting a suppressor, there's a decreased possibility, at least in theory, of blowback. Now, my experience with the Mini-14 versus the AR-15, using the same silencer, I get a lot less blowback with the Mini-14, really none versus the AR-15, where I do get some blowback. I checked around in the internet before I said that on camera, and I have read about guys that haven't had the same luck I have. So it might vary from suppressor to suppressor, but in my experience, shooting the Mini-14 suppressed has been a pretty clean and blowback-free affair. So I know you guys that know something about the Mini-14 are sitting there thinking to yourselves, when's he gonna start talking about the accuracy of the Mini-14? And that's because the Mini-14 has always had a poor reputation for being inaccurate. Well, Ruger's undertaken a series of steps since 2005 to actually increase the accuracy of the Mini-14, starting in 2005 with a revised gas system that's less turbulent, creates less vibration when it's operating, so that in turn helps out with the barrel harmonics and made the gun slightly more accurate. Then in around 2007, they introduced the tapered barrel that you see here, where the barrel is thicker towards its base, where it meets the receiver, and then it tapers out to save weight towards the muzzle. So between these and other improvements to the Mini-14, accuracy's improved as well, and Ruger says you can get two MOA out of the Mini-14. I've got another video that may or may not have run at the time you guys see this video, but I shot another video where I put that to the test. Can you get two MOA or better out of a Mini-14? And you guys are just gonna have to wait until you see that video. And guys, I almost forgot to mention, those improvements, the 2007, 2008, and prior improvements, if you have a gun that has a serial number prefix that begins with 580, 580 dash, or higher, then you probably have all of these accurized improvements on your Mini-14. I haven't even mentioned yet that the Mini-14 uses a cold hammer forge barrel. That gives you greater durability and greater barrel life from a barrel that's cold hammer forge versus one that isn't. That's an option, say if you get an AR-15 from Bravo Company, you're gonna pay what, 40 or 50 bucks for? So it's nice that it comes for free with the Mini-14. Now another kind of out of left field advantage of the Mini-14 that you wouldn't necessarily think of and you don't see in other semi-automatic rifles is the fact that the Ruger Mini-14 is one of the few guns that you can get completely stainless from the factory. Now that's actually a huge advantage for some of you guys that are in a little bit more hazardous environments. You got high humidity, salt water, salt air if you're along the coast or if you need it on a boat. Now that isn't to say it's impervious to rust, but it's pretty nice that you can get an all stainless gun directly from the factory and not a very common thing you see nowadays. So gang, that's why the Mini-14 is better than the AR-15. Well, at least in those ways. You guys know what I'm saying. The AR-15 typically is gonna be less expensive than a Mini-14 uh, for a comparable gun. You have many, 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 many more accessories available for the AR-15. You have better ergonomics with the AR-15. You've got a straight insert magazine well versus the rock and lock clip hole that you got in the Mini-14. All right, so as you guys can see, manipulation of the Mini-14 is a little bit trickier than the AR-15. It's got a standard sporting style stock, just like granddad's hunting rifle, which makes it a little bit trickier to, uh, to maneuver, but not much. The real problem is you've got kind of this paddle mag release right here, similar to what you would have in the AK, but I find it's a little bit stiffer. And also similar to the AK, you're charging by using the charging handle attached to the bolt carrier group. You can see that right there. So anyways, it is uh, not as sleek as the AR-15, and as you'll see in a second, reloads are not nearly as smooth either. Part of the reason for that being that the, the mags, again, they're rock and lock. You rock them in and lock them into place, and they're not as reliable as the straight insert, plus they're a little bit tricky to get out. They fight you on the way out. Uh, so I'll show you real quick.
So, I mean, it still works, right? It performs everywhere else. You're getting a, you're a little bit slower, especially you can, you saw I had to uh, reach. I've either got to reach over to charge it, or I've got to use my dominant hand to charge it, or I got to flip it and reach under the magazine to charge it. So it's tricky when you have a magazine and an optic uh, to flip that bolt carrier. See, there we go. Struggling to get it out and struggling to get it in. So compared to the Mini 14, the AR-15 is much easier to manipulate. Very easy button mag release, straight insert mags. The charging handle is take it or leave it on the AR-15. Some people like the charging handle on the right hand side on the AK and the Mini 14. Um, I, I think probably the AR-15 is better if not faster, but as far as charging goes, you got your ping pong paddle, your bolt release right here that makes it a hell of a lot easier to charge than the Mini 14. So you can see straight insert mag, T charging handle on the back, magazine, waistband magazine reload, Waistband mag change, ping pong paddle. And you're back in. So as you can see, much easier to manipulate and use and shoot and fight with this AR-15 than uh, you would with the Mini-14. While the AR-15 might be, in my opinion, the better of the two rifles, what I wanted to tell you guys today is there are some ways where the Mini-14 just plain excels versus the AR-15, which probably explains how these two rifles have managed to coexist for the past 40 years or so. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. I hope you appreciated this video. Thank you to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and ProxyBid, subscribers, Patreon supporters, couldn't do it without you guys, so thanks again, and I will see you next week.